South Africa's GDP contracted 1.5% between July and September compared to the previous quarter as the economy reeled from a deepening energy crisis as well as the July looting and arson attacks following the jailing of former President Jacob Zuma. The outlook for the rest of the year also appears dreary after a number of countries slapped travel restrictions on South Africa over the emergence of the Omicron variant. Mobin Nasser reports. Kruger National Park and other natural reserves in South Africa are usually teeming with snowbirds from the Northern Hemisphere around this time of year. But many countries have halted flights into the country and several of its neighbours following the discovery of the Omicron variant of the coronavirus. That's put a stop to an influx of international travellers just when local businesses were looking forward to a boost. It's just it's unsettling for travellers and I understand that completely. Um, but our, our, I mean, we were looking for a really good December with a lot of international guests and obviously our guests don't just support our business, they support lots of other businesses in this area and we don't know really at this stage what's going to happen. The economy had already taken a hit following mass riots in July which caused millions of dollars in damages. Supporters of Jacob Zuma ransacked businesses and shopping malls over a week after the former president was sent to prison for contempt of court. Rising international energy prices have also wreaked havoc on the power sector, causing long bouts of load shedding. As a result, GDP shrank by 1.5% in the third quarter compared to the previous quarter, and the jobless rate in the country has shot up to almost 35%. The latest travel bans are a huge setback for the government, which was relying on a surge in tourism to help revive economic activity. The only thing the prohibition on travel will do is to further damage the economies of the affected countries and undermine their ability to respond to and also to recover from the pandemic. U.S. officials say they are re-evaluating restrictions and that flights to South Africa and other countries in the region may soon resume. That could drive other governments to follow suit. But for many businesses that rely on international tourist arrivals during the Austral summer, it may already be too late. Mubin Nasser, TRT World. For more on this, uh, Hugo PNR joins me from Cape Town. He's a chief economist at Bureau for Economic Research. Hugo, thank you very much for being with us uh, today. Sure. Is this GDP contraction worrying and uh, what was it mainly driven by? Well, it's certainly, I, I guess, any uh, GDP contraction is, is worrying, um, and especially in, in South Africa's case, given that um, you know, our recovery has been quicker or faster than expected. But even before this contraction, we, the level of GDP was still not fully recovered from its pre-COVID level in 2019 Q4. Uh, so this uh, clearly sets back that recovery uh, even further. In terms of what, what drove this uh, decline, if we look from the demand side of, of GDP, uh, it was mainly exports and consumer spending uh, that contracted um, a lot. Now, on the export side, it's not just the, the looting spree in KZN that had an impact on transport uh, networks, uh, but there was also a cyber attack on the SOE that runs transport in South Africa, Transnet. Um, uh, and there were some other issues, uh, significant cable theft on, on the, some of the coal export lines. So that all culminated in a, a poor export uh, performance. And then on the consumer side, uh, I guess it's the combination of, um, because of course we did not just have the, the looting, but we had a severe third wave of COVID at the start of the third quarter. So the combination of the two um, you know, uh, constrained consumer spending in the third quarter. Right. Uh, we're going to come to COVID in, in a second, but um, as you were hinting uh, on the looting and distraction of civ civil disorders uh, in the summers, they really had um, a toll on many uh, sectors from agriculture to retail, uh, also to um, households' consumptions. Um, how likely um, is a resurgence uh, of these um, civil disorders? Yeah, that's, a, that's difficult to say, um, but the underlying, I guess the underlying fundamentals in South Africa uh, unfortunately make us ripe for a repeat of, of an event like this. I mean, just last week, uh, we received the unemployment uh, numbers for the third quarter, 
uh, and they were at another record high uh, for uh, South Africa. So you have uh, you have uh, the economy is recovering, but it, but we're not creating uh, jobs. Um, so I guess that does um, uh, raise the pressure um, uh, for social unrest. And at the same time, you know, we have uh, the recently um, concluded elections where we saw lots of people not, not going to vote. Um, so they've sort of, uh, one can say, perhaps given up on the political process uh, to sort of improve their lives. So that is a, you know, that's not a great combination. Um, so, I mean, it's sort of impossible to forecast these events. So let's just say, uh, I think the risk certainly is there that we have a repeat or some sort of repeat of, of what we had in July. South Africa will start to manufacture part of the Pfizer-BioNTech COVID-19 vaccines by early next year. Pfizer's announced the BioVac will obtain the drug ingredients from Europe and begin manufacturing in Cape Town. The deal covers the final stages of manufacturing and it is not a transfer of intellectual property. Drug makers in the country are also in talks with Johnson & Johnson to manufacture their vaccines under a similar arrangement. And now, uh, Hugo, um, on this, um, experts say that uh, Africa needs to make its, its own vaccine uh, to avoid a repeat of its supply problems. What are the main obstacles to, to that, in your opinion? I mean, um, are they legal obstacles, logistics, obstacles having more to do with the infrastructures or with the licenses, rather? I think, I think initially it was, it was a, well, I think it's twofold. The one is the, the manufacturing uh, capability in the African continent. Um, so we know in South Africa there, uh, there's the Aspen um, uh, facility um, that has now been ramped up. But even there, um, it took some time to get the licensing agreement with J&J &J, uh, going. Uh, that is now uh, in, in place. Um, yeah, so I think they were on, on both sides, uh, there were constraints. Right, and looking at the fourth uh, quarter, but also uh, next year, um, what do you think the impact of uh, the Omicron uh, variant could be uh, on the economy? What's your take on that at this stage? Look, I think it's early days. Um, it's certainly, I think there's little doubt it is much more um, transmissible. Um, so if you, the, the pace of infection increase is, is much more rapid than in the previous uh, three waves. Uh, it's early days, but the very initial um, uh, estimates from, from the health experts uh, suggest that um, the, there are more infections but they are not as serious. So we haven't seen up to now the same ICU hospital admissions, uh, for example. Now that is important because we know in the past our lockdown restrictions, when they have been tightened, it's very much been to uh, sort of protect the health sector uh, from being overwhelmed. So I guess that the point is that even if you have a lot of infections, if we don't have the same sort of hospitalizations, that hopefully helps uh, that we don't have, um, uh, you know, tightening of, of lockdown uh, restrictions. But even in the absence of that, one would think that people will self-restrict, right? Um, so the, the, the virus is here, uh, it's spreading rapidly. Uh, so I think on its own, that, that should dampen uh, consumer spending probably uh, as we go through the quarter. Brilliant. Uh, thank you very much for this analysis, Hugo PNR. Much appreciated.